Hello and welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. In this video, we are doing the review for the Bowers & Wilkins 705 S2 speakers. And we're gonna start this review with a story because everybody loves a story at the beginning of a review. And this story is about an audiophile that loves sound and he had a pair of rock solid speakers. I don't know if anybody remembers those, I'm sure they was made by Bowers and Wilkins. And he had them up on the wall in his parents' house in his bedroom and he longed for the day where he had his own room and he could set up his own system and experience audio nirvana. And he eventually found a woman who could put up with him and they moved into a place together and he spent hours setting up his system. He had his rock solids on top of Atacama stands and just as he was about to fire that system up for the first time and experience audio bliss, he knocked one of the speakers onto the floor and broke it and he never got a chance to listen to that system properly. And he cried and he cried and he cried for days and when he eventually sort of got over his morning, he decided that's it, I'm gonna buy myself some proper speakers. And he bought himself a pair of used Bowers and Wilkins Nautilus 805s, the N805s. However, his lack of experience, lack of skill, lack of system quality meant he never ever got to hear the best of those speakers. And foolishly, he sold them on and bought a different pair of speakers and a different pair of speakers after that. And the moral of the story, well, I don't know if it's necessarily a moral, but had he had sound quality that's been as good as what we've been getting with the 705 S2 speakers, I think he would have kept those N805s for much longer. So, story out of the way, let's get stuck into the review. <laughs> Starting the review, as always, we want to thank Nintronics, the superb hi-fi and AV dealership who have loaned us the Bowles & Wilkins 705 S2 speakers for review. We also want to thank Atacama, who have loaned us their Apollo Cyclone 6 speaker stands. We also want to thank AudioQuest, because we've still got their Oak speaker cables and their coffee balanced digital cable in the system. There's two main distinguishing features of the 705 S2 speakers. They're actually visually distinctive and also technically distinctive. The first is that classic top mounted tweeter, which has sonic benefits, but also it's just an iconic design. I don't think there's anything more iconic and more distinguishable for a speaker throughout the whole of the hi-fi industry, except maybe the, the Nautilus shells, you know, the actual main Nautilus speakers. Top mounted tweeter may share a lot of the DNA from the N805 speakers that we mentioned in our story, but there's been a huge amount of evolution in the last 20 years. We were using a double dome tweeter before, which was a 35 micron thick dome on a 50 micron thick uh, voice coil, and that was to stiffen up the entire dome so we had a pure piston. This time round, we've completely changed it. We're using a 30 micron thick dome, and we've actually given it a dusting of carbon over the top. And just to ensure we improve this even further, we're using a carbon ring that sits inside the voice coil to stiffen up that drive unit even further. Therefore, we get far more resolution from the tweeter, a lot more information, detail, less grain, and it sounds far more accurate and precise. That's the reason we're hearing a lot more expression. Together with that, we have a new heat sink that sits behind the tweeter. On the CM series, we were using the tapered tube filled with a, an absorbent material. This was the original tapered tube. This time round, we've actually got a heat sink, and this removes the heat from the dry unit, ensuring we lower the compression. Therefore, we can play at higher volumes for longer periods of time, and there's less of the drone, uh, sort of dipping of the output because of compression from heat. So this makes a large difference to the performance in high frequency. That's exactly what we've done here by removing the tweeter and placing it into a solid billet, it's a machine from a solid billet of aluminium. That's the original aluminium, I'll get to pass that around. There you go. So we've placed the tweeter, we've taken trickle-down technology from our 800 series, we've done the same type of tweeter housing, totally anti-resonant, there you go. The whole purpose is that we want a foundation for the tweeter to perform, but we don't want it to add to or take away from the performance. So that's all well and good, but what are the benefits of actually having the tweeter mounted outside the cabinet? 
This time we've removed the tweeter from the cabinet, we've put it on top. For those of you that were here last year, you may recall that we did this quick demonstration to show you what tweeter on top does. This is a tweeter in a baffle. You can hear that my voice has a kind of a hash to it. If we remove the baffle from around the tweeter, you'll notice the sound becomes much clearer and much cleaner. The other main visual and technical design feature of the 705 S2 is the continuum material used in the driver. Now this is trickled down driver technology from the flagship 800 series. On the base mid unit, you'll notice we've changed over from Kevlar to this, the new continuum material. So who was here last year? Who joined us for 800 series? You may recall last year we were showing the continuum. It's a lot more compliant. It's more of an open weave from Kevlar. And it's actually in all these attributes this allows a drive unit to work far superior. It dies down all of the uh, extra resonances that we don't want in the drive unit. It's self-damping. It works so much clearer and cleaner. Continuum sounds like something from outer space, doesn't it? And the actual driver itself looks like it could have come off a, a NASA spaceship. Looking at the 705 S2, we have a lot of trickle down technology from the 800 series. So getting that type of technology at this price point is really interesting. The rest of the design of the speaker, there's not really too much to talk about. The actual box is not overly big or overly small. It's not overly heavy or oddly shaped. The speakers are rear ported and have a dimple type design, which is pretty standard nowadays. But there is something I personally found quite exciting and interesting about the design, and that's actually the speaker binding posts. Now they themselves are not really anything special, they're pretty standard, but they do have a really interesting spade clamping mechanism which was actually new to me, I've not seen it before, but it's a really simple but effective idea and way of clamping down much tighter and much cleaner a spade connector or obviously your links between your high frequency and low frequency terminal. So kudos to Bowers and Wilkins, that's a really good design. Before we go into the sound part of the review, I want to just talk about how we set the speakers up and actually the measurements we took for Dirac Live. We're using Atacama Apollo Cyclone 6 speaker stands, which are filled up with Atacama Atabytes. If you go and watch this video linked here, you'll see how we did that and why we did that and just how much we filled up the stand. Now the 705 S2 do have bolts on the bottom of them, so you can actually bolt them to some Bowers and Wilkins dedicated stands. Now there are obvious benefits for bolting a speaker to a stand. However, personally speaking from experience, when you bolt a speaker to a very heavy stand, it's actually extremely difficult to make fine adjustments when you're moving them forward and back, side to side, or working on towing. Now, by contrast, sitting the speakers on top of a set of stands allows a much finer adjustments, especially for towing. And there's actual real benefits for that, and it actually makes the whole process of getting a towing and getting things set up much easier. So, yeah, while it might make sense, it might be you think it's the obvious choice to go and buy the dedicated stands for these speakers, which are always nice but always expensive. Sometimes it actually makes more sense to look to a, a very high quality third party such as Atacama because you have got much easier fine tuning adjustment with that type of speaker stand. Now moving on to measuring the speakers within our room and if you follow the channel you know how we feel about Dirac Live and the actual implementation of Dirac Live for these speakers proved it to us again that it's a really useful tool and actually an essential tool even in a very you know good acoustically treated room. So we started our setup procedure as you always would. We did some initial listening, we measured the speaker distances from the side walls and from the rear walls, and then we used just general listening to get our speakers towed into a position that we thought was giving us a solid center image, but also allowing the speakers to image evenly to the left and to the right. Now, interestingly, when it came to measure the speakers, when we looked at our graphs in Dirac Live, the left and right speakers were tracking each other nearly identically. Now that's two important things to point out there. One is that obviously our ears are still working really well, I'm proud of that. But two, and more importantly, that the speakers, the 705 S2, must be distributing their sound very evenly for us to be able to get that an accurate setup 
just by ear. If you look at the Dirac measurement graphs, bear in mind this is an average taken across about nine measurement positions around the listening position. Now we have our typical bass problems, which we'll get regardless of the speaker, but we're not really interested in that. We're interested in the mid-range up into the treble. Now, interestingly, as you can see, the mid-range leading up to about 10 kilohertz in the treble is actually very even, and they're distributing themselves really nice and evenly and pretty smooth. However, as you can see, we have one very obvious anomaly. Now, when we measure our Kef reference speakers in this room, we don't have that anomaly. So it could be a thing with the speakers. It's probably more likely that the speakers are just reflecting off of something in this room. They could actually be reflecting off the, the reference free speakers, which are obviously just sat to the side. It's the only place we have to put them. Now, at first, I wasn't actually sure whether that anomaly, that little kind of kick in the high frequencies is actually put in there by design. Was it there as a sweetener? Was it there as like a little spice kicker to try and kind of emphasize certain frequencies? So when I set the Dirac Live target curve, I initially left that little kick in there and it took me about two minutes to realize that that wasn't an intended design feature because that absolutely killed the sound quality. It murdered the resolution, it killed the imaging and it just made the whole system and speakers just sound really metallic and nasty. So yeah, back into Direct Live, I evened that out, took, took out that little kick and gave us a lovely even and linear mid-range up into the treble with a natural roll off and this excellent sound came back and that is another you know big thing for direct live i don't think people necessarily are always aware of the, the, the damage that the room does to the speaker's sound and you know a, a small error like that can ruin the performance of a pair of really good speakers. So, you know, people have queried why we use Direct Live and stuff, and this is why. It's so that, you know, there's nothing here that can ruin the sound of the speakers. We get to hear them at their best. So the overall corrected frequency response was absolutely fantastic, and we knew we was gonna get fantastic translation from the speakers. But we looked at the impulse response, which is another thing that Dirac Live corrects for. Now, looking at the actual impulse response for the speakers, it wasn't bad, but it also wasn't brilliant. After Dirac Live has done its correction, you can clearly see that the impulse response is now fantastic. So after all that work, after all that attention to detail, after Dirac Live has done its magic and done its thing, we was left with very, very impressive sound. So talking about sound quality, the first thing you notice with the 705 S2 speakers is that transparency. The sound is very free of the speakers. Vocal has a lovely space in the center of the sound stage, and it's got its own space within the whole sound mix. And I think more impressive is the scale and size of the vocal from what is really a modest sized pair of bookshelf speakers. Sound is very clear and very clean. Really fantastic micro detail and subtle nuances. Nuances that come through in music that I'm extremely familiar with, but nuances I'd never heard before. That was really impressive. The sound is very focused and very tight. And that is from the very highest treble right down into the bass. The speakers have very impressive translation that we previously mentioned. The sound is very very fast and very precise. And actually, in a way, reminds me of, a, of cinema type speakers that are designed to be you know, really fast and precise and agile. And that's a trait not often associated with hi-fi type speakers. It also makes me think these will be really good speakers to use in a home cinema multi-channel type environment. The soundstage is a little narrower than I am used to, however, it is extremely focused. You still have elements that are nicely outside the speakers, central between the speakers, and pretty much everywhere in between. And the focus and the kind of narrow sound stage reminds me more of studio monitor type style speakers. I want to talk about the bass because the bass is really impressive. But before we get into that, I just want to use a couple of examples of where these speakers were really shining through. The first one is with piano. Piano notes, piano keys, piano strikes in lots of different music was really impressive. And it was with drums that I was really impressed. It was the clarity and the space between each 
drum strike. And I don't mean drum strikes on the same drum, I mean strikes between each drum around a kit, which often is an arc in the, in the sound stage. And the, 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 the defined detail and the defined separation between those drum strikes was really impressive. And that, especially when there's interplay with a cymbal mixed in, it is very realistic and it is very enjoyable to listen to. Very impressive, very detailed, and yeah, just generally very, very good. And that moves us on, I think, nicely to the bass from his speakers. And that's one of the most impressive areas of their performance and that's not something you say about bookshelf speakers very often. Bowers and Wilkins design team have been really clever here because I think often with bookshelf speakers they're hell bent on extension. We must get bass extension, we must get bass extension, but I don't think the Bowers and Wilkins engineers fought that way with these speakers. I think they just conceded the fact that they would extend to where they extended to but they concentrated on getting powerful and articulate upper bass with just enough extension to be satisfying but with enough power drive and rhythm to all the bass above that that makes you not miss those deepest notes because you've got enough pressure to balance the sound with that direct fast and precise mid-range and treble and that's a really difficult thing to do and the Bowser Wilkins engineers have done that superbly with these speakers. Now don't get me wrong, bass foundation, deeper bass notes is extremely important and that's probably just the one bit of magic that's missing from these speakers but we are talking about bookshelf speakers here so that's not, you know, there's only so much expect expectation that we can have. The bass as with the mid-range and the treble is very fast, very nimble very agile, very detailed, and very, very good. The bass is extremely impressive, and in a lot of ways, it's like listening to, you know, maybe a small pair of floor standards. I mentioned the upper bass, the upper bass is very clean, and that is the type of bass that gets you tapping your feet, gets you nodding your head, and actually makes you want to get up and have a dance to certain types of music. That's kind of the bass that drives along songs, it drives along the rhythm, and it, you know, that's it, it, the bit that will put a smile on your face. So, you know, a, a bookshelf speaker doing that bit well is actually a really good thing. And again, the Atacama Apollo Cyclone six stands that we filled with Atabytes clearly have done a brilliant job of keeping those speakers solid and stable to give us that bass power. I actually think for 100 pounds, for the stands plus 30 pounds for the Atabytes. That is just insane value for money. They are good enough for people in probably 90% of circumstances. If you have young kids maybe running around, you're really worried about them knocking the speakers over, then it makes sense to bolt them to the stands. But for everybody else, these Cyclone 6 stands look nice and they are more than good enough. So overall, I would describe the sound of these speakers as clean, controlled, articulate, precise, accurate, fast, detailed, and really nice to listen to, and more impressive than you think they will be. They're not perfect, they can come over a little cold at times, depending on the content. They can also come over a little bit analytical at times. You do get a little bit of maybe upper mid-range or bottom treble range that will sometimes just harden up and just won't sound quite as sweet as the rest of the range. Sometimes male vocals will sound a little bit cardboard, but other times they sound fantastic. So I am being pretty critical here of these speakers because they do perform exceptionally well at their price point and for a pair of bookshelf speakers. I also found that they responded really well to power and that's kind of a stereotypical thing, isn't it, with Bowers and Wilkins speakers. Now I was powering them off of a 200 watt at eight ohms powerful, very powerful amplifier, and the speakers were only rated to 120 watts. But the more I turned up the amplifier, the more richness and fullness of vocal that we got, the more powerful and dynamic bass control that we got, and just overall a generally better sound. So I would say to you, if you're considering buying these speakers, or if you own them already, be mindful of your amplifier quality and be mindful of your amplifier power because they do respond really well to a big powerful amplifier and if you look at the Bowers and Wilkins demos that they often do they often pair up these speakers with like a 300 watt Rotel 
So in conclusion, these speakers have been really impressive. Actually, really very impressive. I was actually expecting quite a big step down coming from listening to the Kef Reference 3 speakers, but that's not really what I got. Actually, the nimble, light-hearted nature of the 705 S2 actually showed me a few areas where the KEFs are not performing as well as maybe they should do, and that's something I'll definitely look into. The 705 S2 are very good speakers, and all that trickle-down technology with the tweeter and the way that works, and the continuum mid-bass driver and the way that works, works, and you can clearly hear that and having all those technologies and features and designs in a speaker at this price point with modern sort of classic looks i can see being really appealing now i don't think the sound of these speakers is going to be for everybody um, and i think that might depend on quite a few factors really and they're factors that we do have control over you know maybe how lively our room is maybe the quality of our equipment and definitely the power of our amplifier however if you pay attention to details these speakers will definitely reward you with a clean fast accurate monitor type sound that's kind of like cinema type speakers in their precision and speed and accuracy but still musical and still you know enjoyable to listen to and in very impressive in a lot of areas particularly in the bass control and general scale of sound from bookshelf speakers especially the scale of sound from the mid-range now people will obviously use these 705 s2s with subwoofers that's an obvious choice but all i'll say is the bass from these speakers is very fast so if you're going to use subwoofers with these speakers you need to make sure they're also very fast so because these speakers have impressed us so much in certain areas they've actually been probably the most full range bookshelf speakers I think I've heard that are this size and at this price point. and we can't help but give these a certified special performer award for bookshelf speakers at this price point they have really impressed us they are very good speakers and they should definitely be on your demo list whether you're considering bookshelf speakers or small floor standard speakers at anything around the £2,000 price point. I would suggest speaking to Nintronics if you're in the UK, get down and see the guys because you could demo these speakers against a whole host of other speakers on a whole host of different electronics and there'll be something there that will not only please you but that will absolutely blow your mind and so will the quality of the service. So I hope you enjoyed this review. We've got loads of content coming, loads of great reviews already in the channel. Please don't forget to visit our website. We really appreciate it. It's really helpful to the channel. Um, yeah, smash the like button if you enjoyed the review. Take care of yourself and we'll see you soon. All the best.